Earth's oceans are warming fast, and it tells us a lot about the perilous climate position we find ourselves in. Here are the burning facts. 2021 saw the hottest ocean temperatures ever recorded, adding to previous records in 2018 and 2019, according to an Advances in Atmospheric Sciences study cited by The Guardian. Greenhouse gases released by humans are responsible for the rises, with more than 90% of heat generated by global warming absorbed by the oceans. Temperatures taken at least 2,000 meters deep are increasing fastest in the Atlantic, Indian, and Northern Pacific Oceans, but are rising everywhere relative to a 1981 to 2010 baseline. In 2021 alone, oceans heated by around 14 zettajoules, equivalent to 440 billion toasters running, or seven Hiroshima bombs detonating, every second for a year. As oceans warm in this way, they threaten sea life, make cyclones and hurricanes more powerful, and cause rains to fall harder. The process also directly causes sea level rises because as water warms, it expands. The study cited climate model simulations as evidence that the increase in human-made greenhouse gas emissions is responsible for the trend, and study co-author Michael Mann added that until we reach net zero emissions, that heating will continue, and will continue to break ocean heat content records. Hammering home the point, the study also notes that the extent of the heating last year was such that even an ongoing La Nina event, a regular feature of the climate that cools waters in the Pacific, was not enough to see it buck the warming trend. The Guardian completes the story of this ongoing disaster by pointing out that the effects of such dramatic warming are also responsible for a vicious chain reaction, whereby heated ocean water expands and eats away at the massive Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets, which are shedding around 1 trillion tons of ice per year, and that in turn fuels more sea level rise. Of course, we are already seeing these effects. The Thwaites Eastern Ice Shelf, which acts as a dam to slow the flow of ice off Antarctica into the ocean, has a series of fractures spanning almost the entire shelf that could break it up within five years, according to a presentation at a meeting of the American Geophysical Union cited by the BBC. Meanwhile, in October, a huge hole was discovered in the Arctic's oldest and thickest ice, previously thought to be the most stable ice in the region, according to a study published in the Nature Geoscience Journal. The crack had already closed by the time the study was published, but the study's lead author warned in a press release that polynias may become more common or larger in the future. Because as ice gets thinner, it's easier to move around, and the study itself points out that previous storms in the same area had caused smaller cracks, which may be because the ice has already thinned. It is, in short, not looking good. And quite obviously, it's time for governments to intervene dramatically to stop the companies most responsible for the burning of fossil fuels, plus deforestation and other activities that have put our oceans in such trouble. Warming is not even the end of our ocean's problems. This whole scenario exists on top of acidification, the process by which oceans take in around a third of the carbon dioxide emitted by human activity, damaging coral reefs, which are home to a quarter of the world's marine life and provide food for more than 500 million people, according to The Guardian. Antarctic ice sheet melting could increase sea levels by over 5 meters by the year 3000 if current warming trends continue, according to a Journal of Glaciology study. The ice sheet's sea level contribution without reductions in emissions of greenhouse gases has already been assessed as rising between 7.8 and 30 centimeters by 2100. And now further simulations of mass ice loss show that by the year 3000, a continuation of current climate conditions would produce between 1.5 to 5.4 meters of increase. Such rises would make large areas of densely populated coastal land uninhabitable, while reducing emissions could allow for a rise of only 0.13 to 0.32 meters. The main mechanism behind the worst-case scenario rise is the potential collapse of the West Antarctic ice sheet, according to a study press release on Eureka Alert. The sheet is grounded on a bed that is mostly well below sea level, meaning ocean currents can deliver warm water to the area where the ice attaches to the bed. NASA's website explains this is the first step in a potential chain reaction where ocean heat eats away at the ice, the grounding line retreats inland, and ice shelves lose mass. When ice shelves lose mass, they can no longer hold back inland glaciers, so those glaciers can accelerate toward the ocean and thin as a result of that acceleration. This process then causes more acceleration and more thinning, and as more ice flows to the sea every year, sea levels rise. The U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says sea levels have already risen between 21 to 24 centimeters since 1880, and the rate has more than doubled from 1.4 millimeters per year throughout most of the 20th century to 3.6 millimeters per year from 2006 to 2015. 
Scientists looked at bleaching data in 100 coral reefs. They found that the frequency of bleaching from warmer waters increased fivefold from once every few decades to once every six years. Bleaching occurs when the reef reacts to stressful changes in temperature, light, nutrients, and other conditions. This makes the reef eject the symbiotic algae in their tissue and turn pale white. Corals can survive and even recover, but continued bleaching eventually leads to death. According to the National Ocean Service, coral reefs are considered sessile animals, meaning they're fixed to one place. The World Wildlife Fund says they provide almost 30 billion U.S. dollars in goods and services every year. Scientists placed heated panels on the seabed near the U.K.'s Rothera Research Station on the Antarctic Peninsula. The panels heated the water a few millimeters above them for a year, with researchers checking in and photographing the area periodically. Researchers found the amount of sea life there had doubled after a rise of 1 degree Celsius. But after an increase of 2 degrees Celsius, only certain species continued to grow. The encrusting bryozoan grew almost twice as fast under the experimental warmer conditions. Earth's oceans could be experiencing rates of climate change seven times higher than levels today by the second half of the century, even if greenhouse gas emissions drop significantly according to a report published in Nature Climate Change. The team of international scientists analyzed present and future models of climate velocity. This is the speed at which marine mammals would have to move in order to live in waters with certain temperatures as different ocean layers become warmer. Scientists then used climate models to estimate climate velocity rates today in three different scenarios. One scenario is where greenhouse gas emissions start falling from now, another in which emissions would begin to fall in the middle of this century, and the final scenario is one where emissions would continue to rise up to 2,100. However, even in the scenario where emissions would start declining now, climate velocity in the ocean's layer that covers from 200 meters deep up to 1 kilometer down, what is known as a mesopelagic layer, would change from about 6 kilometers per decade to 50 kilometers by mid-century. Conversely, on the same period, climate velocity rate would have on the ocean surface level. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.